Our next speaker is Thomas Verla from Red Hat talking about how you can try to deploy free MP with us. <laughs> <laughs> try is good. So, um, okay, I don't need to, to introduce myself now. So, um, here's the agenda, but I, I think we can simply skip it. So. Um, the, the goal um, of, approach, of the project was to create um, roles, Ansible roles for IPA that are not only a wrapper around the normal um, <coughs> install script so that they can uh, provide additional features but heavily depend on the code of the installers. So what they in fact do is they reuse the code that it is in the installer, cut it into small pieces, and so in the end we will be, we will be able to replace, for example, a part in there. You will see later on we have several parts in there. Um, one big goal was also to have exactly the same results. We can have additional things, but we need to have the same results with the same settings. Um, also, there will be a server, client, and also a replica role. Right now, in the repository, you can find the server and the client roles. The replica role is in the work. Um, it's not pushed because it produces an error in the server. Um, and the support um, is free IPA 4.5 plus. For client, it's 4.4. For server, it's 4.5. Um, and the replica will also support 4.5 plus. Um, by the way, if you have any questions uh, at any time, you can ask me. So here's the comparison between um, using the normal installers uh, and the free, uh, Ansible free IPA. Um, for the normal installers, you need to log into the machines, you need to set it up, you need to have principal password or key tab, you need to wait until it's done, then you can proceed to the next one. So um, at first the server, then the clients, and replica, and so on. And with Ansible, you have, um, that is the goal, um, a simple ins uh, installation with more than one machine possible. Um, you have one configuration file, that is the inventory file, per domain or realm. You have a simple use of OTP for clients. So this is something we added for the client. Um, it can be used in, an, in installation and in update processes and it's more secure because you do not need to provide the admin uh, password to the clients while installing or working on them. We have advanced auto detection for clients so it's not needed to provide all information that is needed right now for um, the normal client install script. And we can repair broken client installations. There's one exception if the KLB5 key tab is missing, we cannot do anything about this because for this, we need another authentication. So, we come to the next one, the free IPA client installation steps. So, at first, um, the domain discovery is done and validation of parameters, time synchronization, then the enrollment is happening, so creating of host entry and key tab. Um, SSSD, PAM and NSS are configured. Kerberos, client is configured, PKI, and DNS. So right now we're coming to um, client configuration using Ansible Free IPA. Um, so as I said, um, the Ansible Free IPA roles are depending heavily on the code of the normal installers. So um, everything you do there, you can also do with the um, with the Ansible roles. And additionally, we have full auto discovery. So um, there is no need to provide domain or realm. It simply gets this from, as a simple try, from the FQDN of the client or the server. Um, and you, it's using the DNS, SRV, or TXT records um, for LDAP and Kerberos to find them. There is, by the way, a small issue you can run into. So if they're pointing to something wrong, yeah, I'm sorry. So um, you can then say, okay, this is the domain I want to have, this is the realm I want to have, and it will override the settings you get from DNS. Um, okay. Oh, I had this, I had this. Okay, we have three supported enrollment types. 
So the normal one is um, admin principle and password, but um, the common one. But I like the OTP version much more than that. It's really simple in Ansible Free IPA client because it's only one setting. You only need to enable, yes, I want to use OTP, and it will do it for you. And you can also use a host key tab. So here we have a very simple and minimal client inventory file for um, IPA clients. So you see there's only the FQDN. Everything else is discovered from, um, from, from auto-discovery using DNS records. And here we have the, the um, settings you can add there. So there is a group that is named IPA, IPA servers um, where you add the information about the servers. So um, the first one would be the master, the second one could be a replica, and so on. Um, if you do not have it, it will try to, uh, to auto-detect it. If it's not there, it will complain. Um, Hyper clients, this is also a group. You can have one to many entries there, and Ansible will take care about this so that all of them are installed. And um, in the playbook, or in, in the background, you do not see this directly. If you have already machines in there that are installed, it will be detected, it will be uh, looked at the machine. So is there something we need to do? Is there something we need to change? And um, if everything is fine, it will simply stop the processing of this playbook for the machine. So it will continue with the next one. If there is something, it will complain. If you additionally said, allow repair, the setting you see on line, oh, it's in here. The fourth <laughs> one, um, it will try to, to fix the machine as far as possible. There are some cases, yeah, as I said, missing KLB5 KeyTab, we cannot fix this easily. So the next, uh, the next settings are IPA ADM, IPA ADM admin KeyTab, password and principle. Principle is something you do not need to set, you can, but it will be automatically set if it's not there. If you do not define it, it will automatically de be defined internally as admin. Um, um, you most likely need to set the password in some sort. Um, I prefer the, uh, the way to use uh, Ansible Vault for this, so that you do not have the password in the inventory file, um, but in a Vault file that is uh, secured and you can use it in your playbook later on. And if you add, for example, the um, use IPA client use OTP equals yes into your um, inventory file, it will automatically switch to OTP usage. And if the client already is part of the domain and there is a KW5 key tab, it will simply detect it, will use it, and will not um, produce any errors on the machine. If you um, have, for example, um, a key tab there that is not matching the domain and so on, so that you cannot use it, it will detect that and also fail. So for client, uh, client is already mature, I would say, mature, um, and um, the server that comes later is in earlier states. It's, but we, I will discuss this later on. So um, there are other settings, k init attempts, NTP, no NTP, this is wrong, should be no NTP and M MK home there um, for the client itself. And they are also available later on in the server. So we now come to, a, uh, to the playbooks, the minimal playbooks. So here is install client YAML. Oh, it's dark. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, at first we have the install client YAML file. You see here it's using the host group IPA clients that have been de defined in, uh, in the inventory file. Um, it uses a VALS file to provide the um, the password that is um, a um, Ansible Vault a secured password, and then it calls the role IPA client with a state present. If you simply uh, replace present with to absent, it will re uh, uninstall IPA client. 
So, as we only have half an hour, I, uh, I do not have demos, but um, we come to server now. <laughs> so, um, if you're using the, the, the script here, so the inventory file and also the, uh, um, the uh, um, playbooks, you can simply use them in the upstream repository. And there are also examples, also the variables are explained there. So for IPA server, you see the list is a little bit longer. There are much more steps. So there is the main discovery, which is currently not really in there, but it needs to be in there. Um, so for example, if you have already a server or for example, the wrong DNS TXT records, um, the normal installation, also the uh, Ansible uh, IPA server installation will simply fail because at some point it will use them, sadly. Um, so there will be some additional domain discovery code um, or domain discovery in the beginning of the IPA server setup um, so that it's able to find out, oh, there is something uh, conflicting and um, maybe we are able to, f to discover how we can solve this then or it will simply fail. We will see. It will validate the parameters in this step. Um, it will configure the firewall. This step is up to you right now because um, we do not have one firewall solution for all. Um, the next step is time synchronization and configuration, directory server configuration, <coughs> Kerberos, certificate server, Kerberos again, um, OTP, Custodia, HTTP, HTTP and so on. You see it's really a long list. This is the one of the reasons why it takes a little bit longer to, set, uh, to install the server. And in the end, um, there is the client configuration. And lately, I've been able to use IPA-client role for this because um, in Ansible, I had a fix that I can use. So um, include role can be used now for the client. So um, it's really nice. Um, IPA server is using IPA-client role to set up the client with on master settings. So now we come to a server inventory file. You see, it's a little bit longer. Um, but you need to set some things here. And here I simply added the passwords. Yeah, I know, they're rubbish. Um, and you can simply also use vault passwords here. And here you also see an excerpt um, of the settings you can use for the server inventory file. Um, all of them are explained in the repository. So there is a server MD file. So here you see it's using IPOS server because yeah, I want to make sure that everyone understands there's exactly one server um, because IPA replica is another um, thing and with the combined playbook that we will have later on, um, it will be possible to make this a little bit easier so that it, that it could, uh, could auto-discover what is the real one or it will take the first one as real, master and the others as replica. And we have bars here. Um, so we, are, we need to set the domain, but we can also get this from the FQDN, which is right not there, and also the realm. We have the admin password and the DM password that we should set, either this way or with um, a vault file. And um, if you look further down, you see there is um, also IPA client no NTP, IPA client MK home there. So, um, the, the server already tries to make it more obvious where um, what it will be affected by the setting. So there will be some adaptions also in the client and there um, it will also be reflected in IPA replica so that you have the same settings everywhere. So no NTP and MK home there are things that are affecting the client um, and it's done there. So um, they will use this prefix as a name. So the next ones are the playbooks for server. So we have install server and install, uh, uninstall <laughs> server. You see they're very similar to the other one, to the client ones. I left out the vault file here because the passwords are already part of the inventory file. And the next one is then 
the cluster inventory file. So this is really something nice we can do now. We can install at first the server and afterwards several clients. And to have settings that are available for IPA client and IPA server at the same time, I'm using <coughs> an additional group, which is IPA. It's not used later on. It's only here to make sure that the settings we have in IPA vars are available in the clients of IPA, so IPA server and IPA clients. You can name this group whatever you want to, but please don't use IPA server, IPA client for this. So um, with the IPA server vars we have in the top, this will only be visible in the IPA server role, and IPA client vars will only be visible in the IPA client role. So we have some separation, but um, do you have a question? No. Okay. Um, but it's possible um, with some tricks or with some magic to access them also. But so it's not really separation, but it, it's simpler for the user. And we come to the playbooks. So the install cluster playbook is a little bit longer than the other one because it simply consists out of two. <laughs> Right now, um, the server is tried at first and then the clients, and if the server fails in this playbook, the clients will be tried to install either way. But we can combine them. But it's not done here, because for this we need some more magic in the, um, in the playbook of the server to make sure that um, if the server is already installed, it's not stopping the processing for the clients. And um, what I've done here, if you have a look back at the f uh, previous slide, you see setup DNS is turned off here. Um, and auto forward is, is also not enabled because it also needs setup DNS. Uh, this is because I'm using the external DNS server. So um, there's already a mapping and reverse mapping. And if you want to use setup DNS, you need to add an additional step between servers and clients to, um, to add the client IP addresses, names, FQDNs into the DNS server of the server. Um, I left this out. There is a module already available in Ansible itself, IPA host, with add and so on. You should, it should be simple to add them. And finally, if we come to the uninstalled cluster, so it's simply a reverse of um, the install cluster YAML file. So at first it uninstalls the client and then installs the server. Uh, uninstalls the server. And after you've done this, um, it's behaving exactly the same with, uh, as with the current installers. So it cleans up most, mostly all files. There are some remains, yes, um, but this is also with the normal installers. And we might address this in a at the later point, so that we will fix this in, in the in normal installers and also in the Ansible installers. So, I think I was too fast, right? <laughs> 10 minutes for questions. <laughs> maybe we can switch the light on. Yeah. Or it, maybe I can show an installation, but it will take some time. All 10 minutes? <laughs> uh, let's see. I think 40 minutes, something like this. So, here I have virtual <laughs> machines. There is a server. Here are three clients, two of them running Fedora 27, one is RHEL 7.4. And I used the uninstall before, so I can simply run install. And it will, here are some deprecation warnings from Ansible. Please, <laughs> yeah, great. Oh, no, I have no network. <laughs> So it tries to install the packages, yeah, and it will simply fail. Expect it, I'm sorry. So we should have something soon. Come on. Well, you can try to use the local. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now it should be able to access the repositories from the pack for the packages. Ah, come on. Uh, not a, ah, okay. Looks better. So, um, it at first installs the packages. Oh, there is, by the way, a warning from uh, from the normal installer. 
that Connie will be used uh, will be disabled. Um, yeah, uh, in the server this needs to be addressed still. Um, there is co code already to not depend on NTP, um, but it's not there yet. And I'm using the upstream repository here. So um, you see it's doing lots of things. I'm, I started it in verbose mode. So um, <coughs> here um, it's doing the tests. It creates the the ID Max, ID Start, um, it detects IPA Python version. Uh, by the way, this is also an interesting thing. Um, as IPA bindings are um, up to now partly Python free, or mostly Python free, there are some issues with uh, older versions. So um, what the, um, what the um, re roles are doing, or the modules that are used in the roles are doing is to detect what Python version do I have in the system? Um, can I use it also for IPA? Do I need to go to two or can I use three and so on? So there's some version checks in there and also to make sure that the imports are working. Sadly, um, we cannot support old IPA versions right now and I don't know if we can get there easily because um, there have been major changes internally and as the um, the modules that, are that are create have been created for this um, are using code from the installer scripts. Um, the old installer scripts have been a long thingy spaghetti code, so it's not p easily possible to get some pieces out of it. And for hyperclient 4.4, I already did some tricks to be able to use the script. Yes? I have one question. Yeah. Um, you're doing a lot of stuff um, also regarding the system basic configuration and uh, as said I'm doing Ansible myself and uh, of course I'm also writing uh, for the servers it's okay to say it needs this system environment mm -hmm. and those OS packages like NTP or something mm -hmm. like this but, but for all the clients you have out there you know it's it's pretty hard to decide where to draw the line and, yeah. um, and where where you interfere with some basic modules the system administrators already yeah. have. Yeah, but know? this is this is an issue with the normal uh, installer yeah. scripts too. And I, uh, how they do you draw the line? How do you find out what to do? And right now, I mean, we're doing exactly the for disabling part of the stuff. You know, so yeah, we have yeah. them um, as long as the IPA installer, uh, the uh, install scripts, the normal one, normal ones have them too. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is planned, for example, we, we have the, the module to set up NTP and as soon as there is a role that we can easily use for NTP configuration, we switch over to this one. Okay. And we will do the same for Kerberos, for SSSD and so on. Mm -hmm. So it was really important to split the whole thing up into small pieces that we can simply replace at some moment with roles that are providing the functionality and are <laughs> able to really configure a service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but I found it, if I split things over roles, I found it hard to really uh, pass notifications or structure the system like this, that mm -hmm. any change is really notifying the service <coughs> to be restarted, you know? If you split yep. over roles, that's pretty hard. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah that's, that's almost unfeasible, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah, we, we work on that. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have, um, one thing that... Um, um, Another thing that we do not have in the server right now are external CA. So the code is there, it might be working, but we're working on a solution to have external CA ex um, before installing the mm -hmm. server. That you have a single step to set it up, to get all the signing requests, to have all together, and to start these, uh, the server installation, installation using external CA completely afterwards. Mm -hmm. So because the, the current model to stop processing um, and writing a file out and asking the user some questions is not working with Ansible. So, um, but we are working on this, maybe in some, I don't know. <laughs> in some time we will have a solution for that because we need it for, for several other things too. So, and you see right now HTTP, okay. Uh, CA is done already. So, mm, how much time do we have still? Five minutes? Mm. <coughs> Might get some light. <laughs> <laughs> Might. Um, we have a little bit overhead 
with, through Ansible with the uh, cutting into pieces, but it's really not that much. And the good thing is, for example, with the client, uh, we have been able to add so nice features, for example, the OTP stuff. Um, so it's, it's really worth it. And um, okay, we could have done this simple version with simply calling the install script. Oh, we are at clients now. So here are the clients, one, two, three. And it's trying to set up the, uh, it's the, uh, importing the variables, making sure that packages are installed. Um, afterwards, the discovery. Here, it's done. Uh, here it detects the Python interpreter and sets it to version 3 to, for two machines, one to two, because it's a rel 7.4. Um, <coughs> now we have the discovery. <coughs> and Oh, it's too quick. So there, there are lots of skip things, um, because OTP has been disabled right now here. Um, but you can simply enable it, and um, it will um, automatically detect it, and so on. And if you have a working krb5 uh, key tab from a previous installation, it will pick it up automatically. Yeah. We're done. So and it was setting up a server and three clients. And Replica will be added um, in some weeks, hopefully, um, as soon as we have been able to sort out why we can kill the server. Um, OK, so do you have any questions? Yes? I used to uh, set up a free server in the next few and I use Ansible as it is. So I'm going to look at your project for sure. But I was wondering, especially on the client side, why didn't you just use something like the, the SSP or the outcome bit? Okay. Um, yeah, I will repeat the question. So, why aren't we simply using the standard tools that are available in the distributions? This is right. Um, Simple, um, because um, we need to be able to provide support for several versions. And we already have code in the installer scripts that are handling this. And um, to add this into Ansible itself might be a solution. But right now, as I said, we, we are trying to be as compatible as possible. So we're exactly doing the same steps with the same code and also with different versions. So um, I personally, I do not want to add yet another um, wrapper around off config, off whatever, and so on, um, as it is done already in the IPA code. Effectively, calls to that code. If, internally, it does it, yes. Internally, it's using off config and so on. But um, if the role itself would need to, um, to do that right now, it might be something that we can address in the future when we are maybe um, switching to the Ansible installers as a default. Um, but right now, we want to keep it as close as possible together. <coughs> um, yeah? Uh, can you repeat that, please? I only got it half. Um, no, I'm going to get the balls from GitHub, right? We don't use them. Yeah, it's in one repository. Yeah. Are, you, are you going to put them in the Ansible repository? They will be pushed into um, Ansible repository at some point, yes. That's the plan. When is the timeline? When it will be ready. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> Ansible guys I also need to do some homework on their side to support yep. some of the um, interesting use cases we're raising for them, <laughs> like the um, roles inheritance. <coughs> yeah. And yeah, at least this is addressed now. Yeah, some of them are addressed, some not. Yeah. Yeah, there there's still some there's also still some work to be done on the Ansible side yes. to make that possible. I'm Time off. Yeah. <clears throat> so <laughs> thank you.